skin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. So, let's get into it then. Swarf and Chips this week. We're going to be looking at five different videos and we're going to be going through them together. So, let's go. So, the first Swarf and Chips we're going to watch together is... <laughs> One down. One down. So the first episode of Swarf and Chips we're going to watch today is Who's the Wally? I'll let you figure out who the Wally is in this video, so keep that to yourself. Um, we're going to watch this. This is from nine months ago. So uh, we'll talk about what's changed, what's happened, um, everything all about that. So let's go. So Lindsay's holding a helmet. Obviously, this has been 3D printed um, and we've seen a lot of 3D printing going on this year. A lot of people are moving into 3D printing. We're seeing a lot of uh, machine shows. Lots of people investing in new technology. The increase in 3D printing has just absolutely blown my mind. When I started it, there wasn't, there wasn't much of it. And now everybody's getting into it and it's great. It's a new system. It's a new interesting industry to put your feet in there. Okay, so here we have Colin um, talking with Mills CNC. And let's see what they're going to be talking about. Oh, a cobot. Lots of automation this year as well that we've been seeing at these shows. And obviously a cobot, um, they're re they can be really small, they can be really big, they can be flexible to your machine shop. They can pick up some really heavy weights actually. And I've seen a really big rise in people going into automation, taking the step into automation, because it's a big thing for people to automate. They don't take people's jobs, they increase people's skill level. You've still got to be able to program these robots and they never take a sick day, they never take holiday, they never take day and night shift, they're 24 seven if you're using the right people, they're using the right equipment. They can be such an amazing advantage to your, to your company. Okay, so here Lindsay's with Time Work Holding and they've got something really interesting here. It's a vacuum, a vacuum suction work holding. I've never seen anything like this before. And you think to yourself, how is it going to hold vacuum? Um, it's going to suck down your parts. Um, I don't know, sorry, forgive me, I don't know how much uh, strength it's got, but as you can see, that's a really thin part. So you're going to be able to do your first stop, second stop, put it on and then be able to mill in, chamfer in, drill, and obviously you can go through the mat, he says, um, and any application can help you. So if you're looking for a different sort of work holding, that's a great testimonial from Time Work Holding. Mm -hmm. So now we're gonna be going into the 10 minute machine shop tour, and this one I actually filmed, so yes. Yeah you need camera work um but i went there with rowan it was in birmingham so not far from where i live and this machine shop is just absolutely incredible just look at some of the sizes of these machines that are going to be shown to you right now Let's so there's rowan here we go he's taking us inside so we like to start sometimes from the outside to just show you you never know what you're going into in these 10 minutes machine shop tours which is what i absolutely love we turn up to Greg in his shed as you can say he's got two machines and then we turn it to a place like this and some of these machines are bigger than people's houses and you don't realize the parts that people are making and the industry is just absolutely incredible and there's one clip in this machine shop tour that I really love we went there and obviously talking about big parts and this part is something that I've never seen before I had no clue what they were doing what it was for and they had this machine and obviously it's got an axis that spins 360 degrees um, and there's a there's a part in this where Rowan's standing next to it and he looks like an ant he's not an ant I'm just saying that's how big this part was and I've never seen anything like this like the the component how did they get it on how did they get tall strong enough to, to cut through this material what happens at the end of it and this is what we find out when we go to these machine shop tours and this is one of the great things about engineering. Everybody does it differently and it's great to see how people do it. So the next 10 minute tour we're going to start at is uh, Brown and Holmes. I've been here a couple of times and shout out to Mark Hayward. He's always welcoming us. Oh, start again. 
So the next 10 minute machine shop tour we're gonna to be looking at is the Brown and Holmes. And shout out to Mike Hayward because every time we come on site, he's so accommodating and he makes a really good brew. I hope it's you that makes the brew because otherwise I'm shouting out at someone different. So let's have a look. They make fixtures, they make work holdings, they make them for customers and they make them for themselves as well. Great drone footage there. And we use a lot of uh, different cameras. So we use cameras, we use GoPros, we use drones to get all these shots. And look at that fixture in there, that's absolutely huge. And a lot of time and work goes into these fixturing. Um, a lot of knowledge, um, a lot of hard, yeah, hard work goes into these. It's not just making a fixture and getting it out the door, it's to customer requirements, it's hydraulic fixturing, it's everything you need from a fixture, Brown and Holmes can do. Sorry. <laughs> Chris, hi, you can come in. Do you want to make a blooper? We're recording. Do you want to be on camera? All around me. Woo! Children play it. Yeah. Having fun. Having fun. It's, it's the season. season for love and understanding. Woo! Merry Christmas, everyone. But I'm bum bum. And the great thing I love about Swarfing Chips is sometimes people don't know we're filming, so we'll get programmers, operators on the machines, and Lindsay will just go and absolutely just grab them and say, oh, do you want to be on camera? And not even just, do you want to be on camera, just what is this machine doing? What tools are you using? Blah, 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 blah. And it, it puts people on the spot, but that's a great, we can get some great engineering stories out of these customers. So the last... 10 minute machine shop tour that we're going to be looking at today is <coughs> sorry so the last 10 minute machine shop tour we're going to be going through today is an amazing company called cosworth um and the great thing about these machine shop tours is we have no idea what we're going into so me tom and chris turned up and it was a fast m system that we were in initially there for um, and we walked in through the doors and let me tell you my jaw absolutely hit the floor so we started off with just the tool and carousel and I think this tool and carousel held over 700 tools. The FastM system was working off 14 machines so we had 10 4 axis and 4 5 axis correct me if I'm wrong I might be wrong but I've never seen anything like this before and just the vast engineering technology that was on show it was feeding the work holding shout out to brown and Holmes as well who who equipped uh, cosworth with their bespoke fixturing they're making engines um, and all sorts of engines not just for a specific customer um, and they needed this system to be put in place because they wanted their output to be more they wanted their scrap and they wanted to be more efficient as a company and i think this fast M system did exactly that it's everything it says on the tin, it works faster, it works cleaner. Everybody was upskilled. Um, you don't have to have one person on each machine. If there's an error, it will come up big flashing lights if something's gone wrong. Not that it does go wrong, but if anything did, then they're easily able to see which machine it is, whether it's a tool that snapped, whether it's sister tooling, whether it needs more cooling. And the really amazing thing was, I know we don't talk a lot about Swarf, but the swarf goes underneath. So when the um, augers flush the swarf down, when the coolant flushes the swarf down, it goes into a conveyor, into the floor and out the door. How efficient is that? Just get rid of all your swarf, it goes into one place. You haven't got somebody in and out, it just does it for you. So Leon, the producer on this episode, has given me a special swarf and chips for me to watch. Um, I don't know wh which one it is, Obviously, I've been on Swarf and Chips before with my previous employer, so it might be one of them. It might be a blooper version where um, I go wrong, or let's take a look. Lovely story. Oh my because goodness. When was this? Uh, 2017. Well, and, I, I and this is the opening of the Marches um, Centre, the Apprentice Centre in Bridge North, which I was heavily involved in. I work heavily with apprentices. I love the system. Um, I love it when customers get apprentices in and teach them their style, teach them everything engineering. And the reason why I started in engineering was because of my two grandfathers. Sadly, they passed away this year, um, quite within 10 days of each other. 
um, and we were very close. They taught me everything I needed to know within engineering. And if it wasn't for them, I don't think I'd be sat here right now. So being able to watch this back, my goodness, being able to watch this back and see them there and how proud they were of me and just to have them involved in my journey, my engineering journey is just absolutely amazing. And I just hope that I can make them proud in the future um, and just keep doing what I was doing. And like Grandad Clive talking now, he was a toolmaker apprentice and he worked for 35 years at Massey Ferguson's. And I think that's where my strive come from. My granddad Reeve as well. My dad's dad, he worked as a draftsman. Um, and just their work ethic just, I think, is really shining through in me. So I just want to say thanks, Leon, for sharing that with me. Um, I really enjoyed that. I really hope you've enjoyed this week's Whip and Chips just as much as I have. It's so lovely to look back at what we've been doing. Like we said, it's nearly the end of 2022 and we've got so much happening in 2023. So I hope you all have a lovely Christmas and a merry, happy...